All right, so let's take a look at the uh, the handout here. So this is from, or I'm summarizing Ross chapter 11 here, at least the first part of Ross chapter 11, and that has to do with the, uh, the pronouns. Now, we actually have different kinds of, of pronouns, so I need to specify here that we're dealing with what are called the independent, I should have put personal pronouns, so maybe add that. These are the independent personal pronouns. Now, what does a pronoun do? What have you learned sort of from grade school or, or maybe junior high? What's the function of a pronoun? Yeah, it sort of modifies a noun, but it, it's, that's what an adjective does, right? But a pronoun will replace a noun. Okay, it takes the place of a noun. And uh, so pronouns uh, will, will basically do whatever a noun does. If a noun can be a subject of a sentence, then a pronoun can be the subject of a sentence. If a noun can be an object of a preposition over the rainbow, then a pronoun can be the object of a preposition over it, over him. Okay, so uh, pronouns can do anything a noun can do, uh, but pronouns by themselves, you don't know what they refer to unless you know the larger context. If I just walk in the door and said, he hit me, he hit me you know that the person that hit me was a man, but that's all you know. You don't know which man it was. But if I said, Dr. Sloan, he hit me. Well, then that means Dr. Sloan was involved in a hit and run. So, uh, and that would never happen, I'm sure. But, uh, but anyhow, so pronouns are also what we call referential, okay? So let's jot that down. Pronouns are referential, and that means that they refer to other things. And what they refer to are the reference. That's one way to describe what they refer to. Another word that you've probably heard is the word antecedent. Have you heard that? Okay, so the antecedent of a pronoun is the noun that it replaces or what it refers back to. Uh, ante is is before, okay? So, uh, when we meet these independent personal pronouns, they're called personal pronouns because they mark person. They're marked for person, first, second, or third person. And so, just like verbs are marked for first, second, and third person, so are pronouns, or so are the personal pronouns. I'm going to give you the pronouns here in this chart, and what I've done is I've put them in front of the verb that they could accompany. Because as you know, the Hebrew verbs uh, are also marked. Their inflections indicate who the subject is. But you don't need a pronoun to know who the subject is. So pakad, because there's no ending, means he did it. He appointed. He visited. Okay? But I could also use the independent subject pronoun, who, and put that in front of the verb, and that would also be translated as he appointed. But now, the verb has a pronoun that is redundant, because I don't really need the, the pronoun to know that he did the verb, that he did the picotting, right? So sometimes when you have the pronoun overtly stated, then that is drawing attention to the subject. I might say something like, I like Moses, but he likes Jesus. Okay, and uh, I would use the pronouns in that sort of situation because I'm trying to draw a contrast between who's performing the action. But let's walk through these pronouns and then I'll make some comments about them. So everybody, who, you already know this is he, right? But notice that I've also told you it can mean it. Why? Yeah, because it can refer to any masculine singular noun. And some masculine singular nouns are not people, but things. So who could be he or it? Everybody, he could be she or it. Um, don't say that too fast. You'll get in trouble. Um, ata is you, and this is a masculine singular you, ata. Um, and at is you, and that's a feminine singular you. And then there are two pronouns for I in Hebrew. The first one, everyone, ani and anohi. So this is I. Now, I want you to notice something. Um, do we mark the gender for third-person singular? 
Really? Do I use the same form for he and she, or is it marked for gender here? Yeah, they are different, right? What about you? Are they the same or different? They're different. That's why we have 3MS, 3FS, 2MS, 2FS. Notice the forms of I are common singular. So it doesn't matter whether I'm Sarah or whether I'm Murray. I still use Ani or Anohi, okay? So don't get the impression that one of these is masculine and one's feminine. Not the case. Any gender, I can use both of these forms, okay? Now, here's what I want you to notice. Actually, here, no, we'll, we'll wait on this for a second. Look at the words for they. There's two forms. This is a masculine plural form. Haim, everybody? Or I can have a comet say ending on this, Hema. Now, notice the accent when it's uh, on this alternate form is on the He, not the comet say. So this should not make you think of feminine singular stuff at all, okay? Because feminine singular comet says are stressed, aren't they? At least up to this point, you've seen them stressed. So, Haim and Hema, they masculine plural. Everybody, Hain and Hena is they feminine. Now, remember how with our personal endings, Tem and Ten, they're the same except the, the one with the M is masculine? Well, the same here, right? Haim is masculine, Hain is feminine. You might also think hens are female roosters, aren't they? A hen is feminine. Okay, so... Uh, you or you all, plural, masculine, is atem, atem, and you all, feminine, plural, is aten. They are the same form except the, the M form is masculine, okay? And then finally, we is anachnu, anachnu, okay? Now, do you notice any similarities between these independent pronouns and the form of the personal ending on the Cal perfect verbs? You should see these correspondences. Let's just highlight them. Now, what I'm about to say is only true for the second person and below, okay? Uh, there are correspondences, not so much with the third person forms, but look, we have ata pakad. Ta, ta, ta. You see that? At, pakat. The at has a silent shiva. Pakat has a silent shiva. By the way, on pakat ta, that's a kametz, right? In some places in the Hebrew Bible, you will actually see the mater he at the end of that. This is actually a defectively spelled kametz he which is almost always spelled effectively. Here, it's spelled fully. It has the full comets hey ending. Sometimes you'll see the hey missing on at, ata, okay? But, but those really are the same ending there, okay? And then at and pakad t is the t, t. And then ani and anohi have a kyrik yod, and pakad t has the ta, tav, tav kyrik yod. So uh, it's not exactly the same, but it's similar. Over here, atem and pukad tem. We have the tem tem. Aten pukad ten. We have ten ten. And anach nu pukad nu. You see the nu nu. All right. Again, not exactly the same, but 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 similar. Uh, what else do you see as a kind of similarity among the forms? Notice that in the forms below the third person, they all begin with what letter? They all begin with Aleph, okay? The ones that are third person all begin with hey. That's right, okay? On the singular and the plural side. Hey, 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 okay? All right, and then the last thing I want you to notice is that in the middle... So let me go ahead and I'll split up the first person from the uh, the second persons, and we've already split them from the third. Uh, what else is the same here? Uh, notice that all the second person forms have what in the middle? They have a tav. Okay, they all have a tav, and the tav has a dot in it that is a dagesh forte. Okay, at 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 at. 
all the same. Ought, 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 ought. It's just a matter of what comes after the ought. You really ought to be able to know that.